Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at the NZXT Source 340 or the S340, you could call it. It's probably the name that I'm going to be using for it anyway. So the S340, and essentially, um, this is like the, although they won't agree with me for saying it, but it's like the baby brother, aesthetically at least, to the H440, which uh, is the only case I've ever actually given the white gold award to, and that's like our very highest absolute pristine um, uh, award. Now this, believe it or not, uh, is actually quite a sleek and uh, understated case. I know it's white, but they do do it in black as well but it's only £59. Now, I know a lot of you out there are always going on at me about, you know, I only do the expensive stuff on the videos, but sadly, the expensive stuff is generally what gets watched, which is why it happens. But this was something that I saw recently at iSeries, um, and it was, uh, it was on the stand one minute, and it was gone the next, and it was, a, it was an early kind of demo model, but I finally managed to get one in here at TTL Towers um, for us to have a proper look at. But uh, I, I want to start going into it straight away. But what I'm going to do is we'll just move on and get into the beef of the review. Okay then, so we'll start where we always do, at the front and at the top. And we've got, you can see we've got our power button here, which is already lit up because we've got it powered on, so that you can see the little white uh, ring around it. We've got two USB 3s, and we've got a headphone microphone and then a hard drive activity light, which doesn't want to flash at the moment, but it does when it's being used. Another thing that we've got on the roof is a single uh, exhaust, and you can see the difference between the colours. You've actually got that matte blackness, which is the internal case as well. Uh, there's a 120mm fan fitted as an exhaust that comes with the case. It's an NZXT fan as well, and these are actually wired up to 12 volts at the moment, because obviously 12 volts, you want to know whether they're uh, noise or anything, and they're actually not too bad. It's not too intrusive, uh, but you can see that the uh, mounts are extended so you can put a 140 in there if you did want to swap it out. So when we take a look at the front of the case, as you can see, it is very minimal. There's nothing there, essentially. There's a gap at the top, there's a gap at the bottom for airflow, and if I pull the front panel off, it takes a bit of a tug. That's what she said. Um, but if we pull the front panel off, you can see it's literally just plain. But the, the nice thing is the internals are plastic, but the, the, the outside plate is steel and it is actually removable as well. If you have a look at the top, you can see there are three screws and you can take that off should you want to be doing any modding or anything with it. It would be really easy for you to work with. And we put it down to the side. We can see the, uh, the matte black internal structure. It's steel again. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It just... The reason why I'm doing it, and it might sound daft, is because it's uh, matte black, it doesn't actually feel cold at all. But it is definitely... So as stupid as it sounds, I've actually been, because this, the coating on this feels very warm um, and uh, quite smooth as well, to the point where it kind of feels like plastic. But I can confirm it is uh, steel, because the uh, my magnets fit in, my trusty XR2 magnet is sticking. So there you go. But also, what I should have done, really in hindsight, was just use the magnets from the magnetic front. Doofus. But anyway, there's a large magnetic um, dust filter in the front. The uh, exposes the front bays. Now, the, there's no fan directly over the hard drives that are at the bottom here, but we will get there. You can see that you can fit uh, 220s or 240 millimeter fans. That does include AIOs as well. So for argument's sake, your X60, your X61, Corsair H100i, H105, you can fit those uh, in the um, front and have them as an intake. You don't get any uh, stock fans fitted here at all. But as you can see, we just put the that on and you've got a nice dust filter there. And just to put our front panel back on. Takes a bit of a whack, but it's on. Round to the rear. So, you've got room for two three and a half inch hard drives in the hard drive cage here, but quite handily, there is room underneath the hard drive cage, and you can kind of direct your cables up that way as well. We've got the uh, power supply over here. It has to come in the back way. There isn't enough room to drop it in this way, and the uh, back plate is removable. 
um, which is obviously you know part of the design so you do have to slide it in there's loads of cable tabs all over the place on this to the point where they're even in here this white Heidi section I'll show you from the other side in a minute but it's brilliant this has got cable tabs on it as well and this actually helps hide your cables very very well it's such a simple thing um, and it's these little touches that I've been very very impressed with with the NZXT cases of late because um, there are no grommets anywhere in this but because of the way it's been designed you don't really need it either I can see this idea being ripped off left right and centre now but this white bit which I like I said I will show you from the other side is removable should you want to put a bigger radiator or anything in on the other side but like I said there are cable grommets literally um, a cable tap latch down points everywhere and I've not tried to make this look tidy at all we've got all of our fan cables just loose and stuff but there's ample room up here there's ample room in the bottom for it if you had a non-modular power supply um, and it's really not because of the cover which you'll see again in a minute it makes things um, very easy to keep tidy the only problem is is where the uh, as you'll see the AIO when we get on the other side you don't really have any way to grab hold of the fan so when you do fit that AIO it can be a bit fiddly um, because you can only really hold it from one side uh, when you do do it um, and you get to if you buy one and you get to playing around with it just take your time with it a little bit don't just get angry and rush it um, because like I said you're not going to be able to use two hands a lot of the time especially at the front here but long story short there's ample room around the back um, for your cables there's loads of mounts for the um, to make it tidy definitely tidier than I've done as well um, yeah so it's time really now to get around to the business side Right, round to the business side of the case, and you can see that we've got a large window there, and it is mahoosive, it's pretty much the entire case, apart from that lower section. If you take the window off, you can see why, because you've got a power supply cover. Again, very similar to the design on the H440, apart from there's no light-up panel on this one. If we have a look down towards the front of the case, you can see that there are some vents there and essentially that's um, so that uh, any heat from your mechanical hard drives can kind of radiate upwards there is no active cooling down there a lot of people will get quite antsy about that but to be fair with mechanical hard drives there isn't really a great deal of benefit to active cooling them either as long as you've got you know some uh, they're not just in a hot box and the you know air can uh, move through then you'll be perfectly fine you don't need to worry about it I've tested um, hard drives in, a, in an unventilated case where they're just at maximum speed all the time and I've not run into any problems. Right, so just to let you know, I've purposely not screwed this solid state drive in, but when you do remove it, what I was going to, it's just a bit of advice. Essentially what I was going to say is, uh, if you put solid state drives in, make sure that you just use uh, the the very end solid state uh, the very end SATA connector um, if that means that you've got two solid state drives just connect two lots of SATA ports um, SATA wires up to your power supply because otherwise you end up with um, essentially like a big loop and there's no you know like nice way that you can particularly do it so what I would do is just use two ends and then you uh, you keep things all nice and tidy and you can obviously disappear your cables underneath and you've not got to worry about it now like I said I've purposely just for the sake of the video not screwed this in just so that I can try and demonstrate that a little bit better but once you've got your cables down and out the way it's going to be it's much it's going to look much tidier so essentially that's that would be my advice there this little uh, opening here is for those of you that put your um, uh, graphics card cables straight up uh, I'm still very much an old school boy where I disappear them round the back but it's you know the options there for you anyway and if you have a look down the back section you can see that you've got the openings for your two solid state drive um, SATA cables and your SATA power now talking about cables there's also this uh, white section on the right hand side which is what I said to you is essentially hiding the uh, cables on the other side so your 24 pin power cable, your SATA cables, your PCR Express cables, if you want to do it the way that I have, all kind of go back there. And rather than grommets, you've got that. And I actually really like that for a basic piece of um, basically metal that's there. It's another thing that's been kind of borrowed from the ideas of the modders. 
The um, power supply cover in the bottom is another thing. It's a very enthusiast base, something that a lot of people have been doing recently. Well, they've essentially taken that and they've also added the, um, the cable cover on that side. And it obviously helps keep um, uh, costs down as well in, in this sense, and I really like it. The cable cover that's here, you can fit uh, a normal thickness AIO in the front, so your X61s, and this is a H100i, will fit perfectly fine. If you did want to go to like a full thickness, like 60mm thick water cooling radiator or something, because of the clearance here, you would have to remove this to be able to go that little bit further in. You can run a 60mm radiator in the front here, and then as you can see, this is a, a Asus Matrix which is a very long graphics card, but you can fit that uh, with a 60mm single radiator in the front, should you want anyway. Other than that, the only thing that I really need to draw your attention to, and we can do it quite easily just by moving the camera there, is the, uh, the PCI brackets or the expansion ports, they're non-removable, I'm sorry, they're non-replaceable. Basically, when you pull them off, and I'm gonna do it on this one now, they're, uh, they're on metal tabs. But if you did change your motherboard and you wanted to reuse the case, you can then just use any PCI um, cover in the back. You can get aftermarket mesh versions, which are black for about five quid, um, but you're only really gonna get uh, run into problems once you've removed them. So if you, if you plan on using the same motherboard for quite a while, you're really not gonna run into any problems. You can see at the back also, that's the other um, fan. There's a, that 120 millimeter fan fitted there. There's an identical one fitted in the roof, which I showed you earlier. They come fitted with the case as standard. They're the only fans that you do get in the case as well. Something else that I would say, especially from this angle that we can see, is it's an ATX uh, case only. And by ATX, I mean you couldn't get a, um, uh, an XL ATX board in there because there's just not enough room. And if you've got one of the motherboards where you're planning on hanging uh, one of your graphics cards off of the bottom of the board, and you can get that with uh, some of the other cases, you can see with this that there's literally just no room before we hit that back plate there. So it's ATX, you could fit an MATX board in there if you want, obviously, because then you're just gonna have a, a shorter board. Um, you'd have to be a retard if you put an MITX in here, but anyway, you can do that. There's obviously, there's also a very nice uh, cutout on the back of the motherboard tray, which I forgot to mention previously. But really, with the internals and that, it's quite simple, but also quite effective, because that all looks really tidy in there. It didn't take me very long to build. The AIO is in the front. I know a lot of people are gonna start whinging and moaning about hot air going into the case and stuff, but you really don't have to worry too much about that with the other two fans. Um, this helps keep your power supply extra um, hidden and out the way and nice and tidy. And it also helps with the cabling as well. Stick the window on and boom, you, with a couple of solid state drivers in the bottom, could look amazing. Now, uh, let's also remember that this case, as I've said at the beginning, is only 59 quid. But I think really it's now time for us to move on to the conclusion and get things wrapped up. Right then, peeps, moving on to the conclusion in my Big Bang Theory t-shirt. So, 59 quid, uh, and that was, um, uh, I grabbed that from Overclockers in the UK as well. Um, they do have the white and the black ones in stock. So, what do I think about it? Awards first. Gold, without a shadow of a doubt, and then uh, value for money as well. For 60 quid, this is a bit of a billy bargain. I know people, and I've already seen someone say it on uh, the Tiny Tom Logan Facebook, because I posted a picture after I built this earlier on, and uh, people were instantly saying, why is it not got extra fans in the roof? Now, there isn't room to put the AIO in the roof, and obviously that would make things a lot taller as well, and I think this is quite a compact design, and I think they've used the space very well. Having the AIO in the front, especially once you get rid of um, optical bays, because I know some of you still like to use, you know, like watch Blu-rays and stuff like that, but so much stuff's available digitally now. Internet speeds are obviously a lot better, and with uh, games and stuff, you know, you can just use Steam. I only ever use an optical drive. If I'm using such a new product, that's the only way I've got of uh, getting the drivers on there, because sometimes they send you like just a burnt disc. Um, but I generally don't use CDs and DVDs and stuff like that anymore. So this is one, this is uh, a build for those of you that are brave enough to kind of move uh, away from that. And like I said, for 60 quid, you can get your, a 240 or a 280 AIO in the front. 
So if you're gonna stick with the NZXT products, that's the X60, the X61s, although you can put the X40 and the X41 in the front if you wanted to as well. If you put an X41 in the front, it would also mean that you could run one of the NZXT um, graphics cards coolers with another X41 in the front as well. So you could have twin AIOs in there. Um, the uh, power supply cover does help keep things um, uh, nice and tidy, and by that I mean it just hides any of the mess underneath. So if you were to run a, a non-modular power supply, stash it all under there, it's really not gonna matter. Most of mine is just all wedged down, it's you know, pulled all the cables as tight as I can get it, and it's all shoved under here, which you can't do in a normal case. Um, the AIO, if you did want to run a full water cooler, then you can put it there, but that little um, white tab would have to be removed. But that white tab in itself is a master stroke. Such a simple thing, but I actually think I prefer that to uh, grommets, because obviously grommets, they kind of all spray all over the place and you can struggle to get cables through. That is fucking brilliant. I love it, absolutely love it. Um, really, it's you, you get so much for your money it's unreal it's probably one of the best cases uh this kind of price point i've seen in years and i know the um the industry kind of moves along and stuff um, but it's been a long time since i've seen a case at this price that i've personally wanted to grab hold of and review aesthetically talking having an extra fan in the roof would probably have made it look a bit nicer but i understand that they wanted to keep it simple and keep the cost down so I, do you know what i mean i can live with that um but the gloss white does look work really well, especially with that black top. It's, it could almost be like a mini orca. And for the regulars, you'll understand what I'm talking about with that. But obviously they do do a black one as well. I love the sleek lines. You can't really go wrong with it. Um, and like I said, for 60 quid, they smash so much in there. That's why it won value for money. Um, and I'm, now I've actually been kind of sat here thinking about it. I can't remember why I didn't um, give it the white gold. And uh, there was some little niggle. Oh, I know why I didn't give it the white gold. It was the brackets at the back, the uh, non-removable brackets. To be honest with you, if they had been removable, I know it would have added to the cost and all that type of stuff. But, you know, th th if that was there, I probably would have given it white gold. But it's don't take that as me marking it down. That's literally just me being horrifically picky. Um, but for the price, I don't think you could have asked for a lot more. The only other real kind of like uh, thing to go careful with is, like I said, with the power supply, remember the power supply has to go in from the back um, and just spend a little bit of uh, time, if you're going to be putting an AIO in the front, making sure you get your screws lined up because where you can't get that second hand on it to be able to fit it, it can get a little bit fiddly, but just, you know, calm yourself down don't go nerd raging on it just take a little bit more time and it will go in it actually didn't take me that long to build uh, for all intensive purposes but the uh, s340 i am mightily mightily impressed with uh, in my own personal opinion i think nzxt have come on leaps and bounds over the last year or so and this is just a testament to where that design process has been taken and i love it so uh, if you're looking for a cheap case, I would actually say below about 80 quid, uh, maybe even going up to that 90 pound mark. So, you know, yeah, but let's say below 80 quid, I would say personally, this is probably the best case that is out there at, at the moment with any, any of the manufacturers. And that's a big statement coming from me. So gold award, value for money award. If you're looking for a case that you want to put a 240 in and you've not got a lot of money to spend, you've finally got an absolute corker of an option. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you, out. Ding! Ha <laughs> ha, that was a big ding.